Hello, uh, everyone. I'm, so today, what I got in mind, I want to start uh, continue uh, talking about uh, Heidegger. Uh, but now we're getting into the meat of, of of being in time and what's called the existential analytic of Dasein. The existential analytic of Dasein, you know, a fancy way, a, a, an analysis of the existence of the being here, an analysis of the existence of like this thing, okay. And we want to take a look at it in its average everydayness. Um, <clears throat> so real quickly again, to sort of recap, uh, this is a phenomenological inquiry. So what we're doing is trying to look at um, lived experience. And lived experience, like I just said, in its average everydayness. So just like what we're doing right here, or what you're doing right there, if you're doing your average everyday thing. Um, this, what we're going to do what, to understand Dasein in this way is the phenomenological reduction. And how this works for Heidegger is um, to attend to Dasein as it engages the world in the ready to hand versus trying to understand Dasein like from standing out of experience and looking at it, right? So instead of making ourselves an object for ourselves in like reflection, we're trying to make ourselves, or we're trying to understand ourselves not as a thing that is like um, separate from a world and then trying to figure out how the world and me communicate. Uh, what we're trying to do is understand how we are, uh, you know, what we're doing just when we're just living our lives. And so the phenomenological reduction to the ready to hand um, is going to be important. So how do we do this? Um, there are three moments of the existential analytic of Dasein, uh, and by which we'll understand the general structure of Dasein. So we're going to do an ontic existentiel analysis so that we can understand uh, the ontological existential structures of Dasein. Okay, that's all Heidegger's language. Um, uh, so trying to keep all of that together while we're going along. Uh, the first the three moments are in the world, or, or the worldliness of Dasein, uh, just like how we are engaged in the things that we're engaged in. Okay, so the three moments of the existential analytic of Dasein are in the world, the who of Dasein, and being in as such. Uh, in the world, uh, being in the world, or the worldliness of Dasein, this all describes um, a sort of engagement uh, that is with like the, the, I guess the the solid things of the world, but not necessarily solid, but you know, like we're doing stuff. So what happens when we're doing stuff? And that, I mean that like in the most general sense, because we're looking at the average everydayness. What what are we doing when we're doing things? This is this is Heidegger's question. Um, so how is Dasein worldly? How is Dasein in the world? Uh, well. One of the things we're going to need to understand first is Dasein is always already. This is a Heideggerian phrase that you really need to familiarize yourself with. Uh, one says always already when one means that I have been thrown into a world that is like built for me. I've been thrown into a world that is that opens up certain kinds of comportments and certain tasks and certain ways of uh, recreation, certain ways of work, certain ways of relaxing, certain ways of living, certain ways of, of uh, ambulating, car, bike, walk, sidewalks, trails, all this stuff. The world is sort of built for me, and I'm thrown into it. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we'll see is that I'm that because this is built for me, I'm always already engaged with it, right? So it's a historical thing. I find myself caught up and bound in to a, a built-in history that I just sort of arrive on the scene and start taking up uh, as if it were my own. Uh, the thing is that it's not. So we want to explore that. Um, how am I always already? Another thing always already means is this. Because I'm doing things, I'm also moving towards something. So this history that has been provided for me is also a trajectory, okay? So the history that, that is built into the world 
tells me what I'm supposed to do and where I'm going, well, it, if, if it doesn't tell me where, it does indicate it, and I can't get away from it. So one of the things we'll see is that I'm built, I'm thrown into a world that has a history and a future. Neither of them are mine. Okay? So this is, this is an important thing. We want to figure this out. Uh, how are we in the world? <clears throat> uh, Heidegger says it's a, a pre-thematic engagement, which means that I, I'm engaged in things that I haven't made an express theme out of. We'll talk about that and give an example in just a second. Another phrase he says, it's concernful circumspection. Uh, concernful circumspection. Um, well, the concernful circumspection like literally means maybe something like uh, an engaged looking around. I don't like circumspect uh, means looking around maybe. Uh, that makes it too visual and like I'm passive and just sort of like doing this. But, uh, you know, maybe concernful engagement. I Whatever I'm doing, I'm, I'm hoping to, to like do it until I'm done with it and then I could be done with it or maybe I have to do it again. Whether I'm getting dressed and don't, you know, or, or taking a walk or doing a lecture, there's something I'm, I'm aiming for and I'm aiming for it and I'm doing kind of, I'm, I'm doing that on purpose. I mean, this, this is the goal I've given myself. I want to do this lecture. I want to finish getting dressed. Thank goodness. I want to take my walk such that I end up someplace like home, you know? So there is like a trajectory, and that's why I'm doing it. Uh, but when I'm engaging all of the things, I'm not making all of those things specific themes, like now I'm holding my my water, and now I'm standing in front of this thing, and now I'm looking into this, and now I'm looking. At... That all just sort of disappears in the use of it. <clears throat> so what Heidegger calls this sort of disappearing in the use is equipment. So my engagement in the world, Dasein's worldliness, is a pre-thematic engagement with equipment. Okay? And remember, pre-thematic here is also that ready to hand. Um, I, I don't even notice that my glasses, you know, are, are on or, uh, until the, all of a sudden there's a thumb smudge on there or something like that. And I got to go, oh, man, I can't see. You know, they disappear in my looking through them. My shirt it just disappears in its being on. And then if it's like uncomfortable or something, then I have to do something to it. Or my like my example again was this, my shoes until I get like a flat tire, you know, the, the sole falls off. My shoes were just like disappeared in their use until, <clears throat> and this is Heidegger's word, until equipment becomes unworkly, in, until it stops working, uh, we don't notice it. It just disappears in its use. Until your pen runs out of ink, you don't even, I mean, it's just there for an implement for use. And it's and it just goes because it's, it, it's working fine. And everything's working smoothly. And then you run out of ink and it's like, ah, cuss. And you got to do something about it. But what we want to do is look at how the pen was and how your shoes were and all these things before they make an appearance, before there's a problem that we have to deal with. So that's how we'll get to our average everyday engagement in being. So this means that the that all of equipment is understood as you know this it's the the fancy word here is teleologically right everything's got a purpose everything's got a goal everything's Heidegger keeps using these words like for the sake of which everything is understood at in terms of the for the sake of which everything's understood in terms of in order to and one of the problems we'll see is that we understand ourselves as something for the sake of which and something in order to. And that means that we, Dasein, uh, become equipment-like, right? Uh, we'll never dissolve into that because we, keep, we don't have the kind of being that equipment does, but that's what we're trying to show ourselves here in this existential analytic of Dasein. Okay, I want to uh, just expand and uh, maybe uh, look at an example or two of this, the nature of this uh, equipmental nature of the world that Dasein engages with. Uh, Heidegger's famous example is, is the hammer, right? The hammer in the workshop. And the point here, and this is on the Grignan and Paraboom 228 and 230, uh, one of the things Heidegger says is that there's no such thing as a piece of equipment. 
Okay, there's, there's like, if we understand this as equipment, we don't understand it as, as like a thing that could be a equipment separated from the world, right? Because uh, as equipment, what this, what is bound up in the meaning of a pen is like what paper and what truth, maybe lies, uh, information, uh, writing down notes frantically to get all the information so that, again, again, so that for the sake of which, right? So in a pen, even in this little implement, uh, is caught, is bound up all of Dasein's destiny, right? You're writing down the things that you're writing down to get the grade in the class, to get the degree, to get the job, to get the house, to make a fence with the Porsche and all the other things you need, right? Um, that's all bound up right here, right here in this thing, right? And so there's all of the same sorts of trajectories and all of the same sorts of equipment that you have all around you. They all align themselves together because they're not meaningful like by the present at hand. It's not like there's a pen thing and then all of a sudden I can see that this pen thing could be used with this paper thing. Like, oh, what a discovery. These things that exist independently of everything of, of themselves can be brought together. They were always already bound together. And, and your shoes are for walking to and from work or to, uh, to, to and from uh, the, the store for, for survival or, or, or for, for leisurely walks or for, for the sake of, for the sake of, for the sake of. So understand the world and the equipmental nature of the world is, as like a bound unity. Uh, uh, interdependent, there is the totality of equipment, this is Heidegger's phrase, is prior to any piece of equipment, right? So the whole of the equipmental nature of the world is prior to any of the tiny bits that we would uh, separate out in that, right? So everywhere I look in the whole world, there's that totality of equipment, Everywhere I engage the whole world, I'm engaging that totality of equipment. Everything I do, I'm engaged in a purpose, a goal, and an end that is built into the world that is not mine. <clears throat> you know, one of the problems here, and Heidegger is not an environmental ethicist um, in any in any explicit sense, and maybe not even at all, but there's some uh, understanding in Heidegger that served as a ground for some insights into uh, what, like echo phenomenology, or um, it's, that is eco phenomenology, echo eco, I don't know which one, oiko, how about we do that, the ancient Greek, um, uh, you know, phenomenology of the, the environment or nature, uh, you know, a new sort of relation to, the, to nature, because sense equipment is, is the way the world is thematized for us, that makes nature standing reserve, right? Every, what's, uh, you, we even see this in the, in the school the, 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 of, the, of the sciences, the school, it's a, the school of natural resources. What, what is nature? Resource, it's for me, whatever I want. I mean, it's like, what can I do with this waterfall? What can I, I can make money for, uh, with the view or something. I can, I can generate, uh, uh, electricity with I could do what's it for for me for, for use it's a use thing so a value in itself that is not for me this is something that we might we might wait to see uh, toward the end of this Heidegger lectures uh, in, with Colossenheit uh, the sort of releasement Heidegger speaks of where I, I just I, I break that for the sake of which I, I suspend or release that teleological engagement and I'm allowed to let things show up as they are. So that's, that's further on down the line. So uh, all of nature becomes standing reserve. Um, uh, one other thing here to say, because this is where we're heading. Uh, the second part of the readings is about uh, Dasein's being toward death. And what's this about? Well, we're engaged in projects. The project does not show, the projects do not have a goal so much. You know, it's not like the, there's a coming to fruition of them. I don't, I, I go to work to go to work to go to work to go to work. I have shoes for 
going to work, going to work. I got pencils for writing down stuff to get the the stuff that I need to get, get together to be able to keep surviving and all the other things. Like they they have this trajectory built into them, but it's not a specific one, right? So it's not a it's not like a goal, but there's just unending purposes, unending engagements with equipment. Except it's not unending. Um, because there's going to be a point at which I no longer engage equipment. Uh, that is to say, when I am dead. So we are like an, an equipment engagement thing until death. And, uh, you know, that might sound all oh, 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 morbid. Like I got to get my, paint my fingernails black and, like, go, I don't know, listen, I don't become a whatever uh, morbid person or something. Uh, that's, not, that's not what Heidegger is saying. I think that what we'll see here is that something like that being toward death shows up more than anything the equipmental nature of my existence so that I can now see it for the first time, so that I can now engage it in an informed way or something like that, in a new way or with a new possibility for Dasein. So being toward death isn't just like, oh, we're all going to die, so let's just... Get rid of it now. Not at all. Um, really, it's something like, maybe even something like uh, Nietzsche's eternal recurrence. It's not really about what would happen if you had to live this moment again. You know, like, it's really going to happen. So, you know, be prepared for what's coming this next time around because it'll again and again. It's not about that. It's about breaking up that teleology such that all of a sudden now, this moment, shows up in a way that it hadn't before, okay? So the being toward death is a, a, a way of becoming aware of our inauthenticity, and that will, sh that will allow for the possibility of being authentic, okay? So that's where we're heading with this. Um, so 